Several months ago, a coalition of scientists approached the WHO and asked them to change their guidance about whether SARS-CoV-2 could be transmitted um, in an airborne fashion. And more recently, the CDC placed similar guidance on their website only to take it down a day later. So what does the evidence say and how should people best protect themselves? The overwhelming evidence suggests that the majority of transmission happens um, much like flu um, via these large droplets that get expelled when people cough, laugh, talk, sing, sneeze. Um, these large droplets, um, because of their size, don't travel very far and they fall out of the air rapidly. And this is the basis for why we suggest people wear masks when they're in close association. And it also explains why the bulk of transmission appears to happen between close contacts. Regardless, there is evidence that the virus can be transmitted or expelled in these small aerosols, so smaller versions of those particles that can travel upwards of 27 feet and remain in the air for longer periods. We know if we sample hospital air, we can find virus in the air, um, but what we don't know is whether the virus having been in that state is capable of infecting people. And we also don't know how much virus you have to inhale before you can become sick. There's also some evidence from some cluster studies um, to indicate that airborne transmission was involved. Um, in China, there is a case from a bus and also in Washington state from choir practice. In both situations, uh, the infected individuals ended up infecting people who were not sitting very close to them. We also know there's an example from a restaurant where it looks like virus may have traveled through an air conditioning unit. And more recently, there's evidence from a long haul flight where it looks like someone in business class infected mostly people around him, but also infected individuals in economy. Now, because those two sections, the plane don't mix, um, it could be that that transmission into economy occurred via those small aerosols. But um, we also cannot rule out that those people were infected by contacting the infected individual at um, check in or during baggage pickup. So. All of this suggests that airborne transmission is possible. Now it's important as we move into the cooler months in the Northern Hemisphere and we're spending more time indoors that people effectively evaluate um, the risk that they might experience. So it's important to wear a mask indoors and think about the places that you'll be spending time in. Is there good airflow or ventilation? Are they crowded? Um, can people get away from each other? Um, is everyone wearing a mask? So you might want to avoid circumstances that put yourself at higher risk for this potential form of transmission.